Hello, and welcome to Punk Rock Tabletop. Today, we're talking about the family classic board game, Sorry. The earliest variation of what we know as Sorry started in England back in the late 1920s and was published by the British Card Manufacturers Company. It was adopted and published by the Parker Brothers in 1934, where it continued to be in publication even today, even though Hasbro bought that company out back in 1991. Today it is a game still enjoyed by many, many people, despite its one biggest flaw being it relies quite heavily on luck. And here's one of the beautiful things about tabletop gameplay. You can change it to fit your need and what you're wanting out of the game that you are playing. With that being said, there are two rules variants that I've come across and personally enjoy that take a little bit of the luck out of the game and add in two varying levels of strategy. Before I get into the two variants, I will do a sort of refresher on the rules since it may be several years since some of us have last played this game. Typical and the standard version of, sorry, each player has four pieces that starts in their start area. With the deck of cards randomly shuffled and placed on the board, the first player overturns the top card. That player moves according to the rules of that numbered card, according to the pieces he may or may not have out on the board, and then play continues to the left. In order to get one of your pawns out of the start area and onto the dot square, which is located immediately after that area, the player must, on a numerical card, draw a 1 or a 2. The only other card that allows a pawn to escape its start area is the player drawing a sorry card, which has that player take one of his or her starter pawns and place it on the square of a opposing pawn, sending that opposing player's pawn back to their start area. The goal is to get all four of your pieces out from the start into your safe home zone. Without doing a, another time-consuming breakdown of all the rules of gameplay, I'll only point out a couple of these special cards to keep in mind, particularly when I go over these rules variants. The two card not only allows the movement of two spaces, or to let one of your pawn pieces escape out of your start onto the dot, it also allows you to draw another card and take another turn. The four card specifically only allows a pawn to move backwards four spaces. A seven can be split movement between two pieces. The total amount of spaces moved by each must amount to seven. The ten card allows a pawn to move forward ten spaces or backwards one. The eleven card allows either a forward movement of eleven spaces or allows you to trade the spaces of one of your pawns not in your start or safe zone with a piece of one of the opposing players. Now that you have been refreshed on the rules and the specialty cards, let's talk about the first and most popular rules variant out there. This first variant calls for the deck of cards to be shuffled, and then each player is dealt a secret, you know, hidden from the other player's five-card hand. On a player's turn, he or she may choose one of the cards in their hand to play as their card for the turn. That card is placed into the discard pile, and normal sorry rules apply. At the end of that player's turn, they will draw a number of cards back into their hand so that their hand always equals five cards at the end of their turn. This could equal to more than one card being drawn, of course, if that player draws or plays a two card, which allows another turn. The addition to these hands to the game kind of tip the balance between the luck aspect of traditional sorry slightly more into a strategic aspect. Since you would, on average at the start of the game, see more cards, your likelihood of seeing a 1, 2, or sorry is slightly higher. Which can be good for most people playing, particularly children, since I know at least I've always found that the greatest frustration in sorry is getting the first piece or two out. This gameplay mode additionally requires some sort of planning and strategery, as they like to say. Since you know that the chances of your opponents having cards in their hand that could, I don't know, screw you or <laughs> get some of your pieces off the table are a little bit higher, you have to think a little bit more about what card you're going to play in your hand 
at what time. If you enjoy the thought of adding even more strategy to your games of Sorry, then the second rules variant is going to be your jam. In this play mode, which I kind of have nicknamed War, you shuffle the deck of the cards and deal them out completely to all the players present. This causes there to be absolutely no draw deck and every card available is in somebody's hand. This creates a situation where there is not only strategy but also resource management. The players will go around with the standard five card hand or standard sorry rules playing one card at a time from their hand. There are no additional cards drawn until one player is forced to take a turn and they don't have a hand of their own at which time all hands and every card in the discard pile is collected, shuffled, and then again you deal out the entire deck, evenly as best you can, amongst all the players. In this mode you have to get into the mind of your opponent and decide when to play your own specialty cards. When would be the best time to let a pawn out of start, when to have a pawn move backwards for, or when to, when to play a cleverly played 11 or sorry. This turns a game that is, in essence, 80% luck and 20% strategy, where with this variation it ends up being almost the complete opposite. You've only got about 20% of luck playing into what goes into your hand. The majority of the rest of the game pretty much is strategy. If you are a fan of strategy, I did a video and article about another classic board game, Stratego, which can be found at www.theculturecache.com. While you're there, check through our abundant cache of articles and videos ranging on board games, movies, TV, even cosplay. If you see something there you like, we've even included Amazon.com links. Isn't that nice of us? Speaking of nice, we also have a handy donate button located there at the top of the page. Come on, click it. I dare you.